So that was an extremely simple animation that I created in Moho. I did all the artwork within Moho, uh, but I wanted to test out the Curver Layer Tool, which is an option you can use to rig objects not using traditional bones you would see in a 2D rig. So in this video, I wanna go over how that works and a few of the stumbling blocks I ran into and how to fix those in case you have the same problems. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here I'm in Moho and I've got my scene set up and this artwork is based on one I found online on DeviantArt from someone named Jorno Moore. And they even mentioned they can't take credit for this style because they were doing a study from Gravity Falls. So I just want to mention them and I'll leave a link below that you can see where that artwork is. If I turn this on, you can see this is what the original artwork looked like. So I tried to imitate it as best I could. Completely in Moho, I wanted to do everything here because part of the reason was I wanted to get more used to the tools, including the styles panel. And after working on this in the styles panel, I have a pretty good comprehension of how it works and the best ways to use it. So I'm going to turn this off. You can also see in the timeline, I have audio and that's the wind. I want to turn that off as well. So we don't have to look at that. So you can see on the right, I've got all my folders and layers and everything is broken out into their own little section. That's because I want to be able to customize everything. And again, I also want to do everything in Moho. I didn't want to do anything in like Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint. I want to do everything here. And I will say Moho's drawing tools, once you get used to them, are great. Uh, at this point, I just soon work in here than an outside program because I feel like it's just easier than bringing something in from the outside. So when I first animated the tree, I tried to use the bone system and it worked, but I feel like it was a little stiffer like you would normally see with a joint. And that's not what I wanted. I want something kind of flexible. So that's why I decided to use the curver. And I'll show you quickly how to do that. Uh, there was some uh, learning curves on that as well. So I'll kind of cover that in case you run into these same issues. So I've opened that folder up. You can see I have a masking folder here. And beneath that folder, I have another folder that's also masking different elements. And then those are on top of the background of the main tree element. So the first thing I want to do with that main tree selected, and you can see that outlined here, I'm going to go to my draw tool. You can see I have create curve layer. I'm going to click on that. You can see that's created a spruce tree warp layer, and that is what we're going to be using to animate the tree. So we'll go to my transform tool up here on the left, click on that, or you can use T. And I'll grab this one end. You can see it highlighted. I'm going to drag that down to about right here. I want to do the same thing to the top. And I'll bring it just above that. And I'm going to grab this Bezier curve and bring that over and the same for the bottom. So I've kind of got the line lined up with the tree. Now I'm on frame zero and you have to use frame zero for any of your uh, rigging and things like that. And then once you want to animate, you come out into the timeline past frame zero. So if I bring this out and you can see I'm on frame 48, that's where I'm starting. And I did that because I was working with the animation. So I really want to get this back to zero. So to put that back on zero, I held alt and just clicked on zero and you can see it extended that back to zero. Now, if I move out to one, I can now manipulate this using the transform tool. So if I grab this point and bring it over, you can see I can move the tree back and forth. Now it's only moving kind of the top. If I click on it, I can grab that Bezier curve and move it out a little bit and I can bring it down. I can also do the same thing at the bottom if I'm not getting the look I want. So you see how it's not grabbing this, that's because our area of influence isn't big enough to cover that. So I'll left click and drag and delete these keyframes. So back on frame zero, you can see, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's an area of influence covering this. So if I take my line width tool and drag it across the line, you can see I'm increasing that a little bit. So now I'm gonna go back to the transform tool, come back out to the timeline. Now if I grab this again, you can see it's taking that with it. So if you run into that issue, you may need to adjust your area of influence. Now you can see, this was the tricky part for me, that the shading and other elements of the tree aren't going with it. So I hit undo to get rid of those keyframes and go back to zero. Now my additional elements are in this top folder called layer five. You know, I was pretty good about naming my folders, but then there were some I just didn't, I don't know why. But layer five, that includes all the elements. So if I double click on this, I get an additional menu. 
And if I go to vector under here, select warp layer, I can click on that. And this shows all my layers, but I know it's spruce tree warp. I'm gonna click on that, hit apply. I'm gonna do the same thing for every one of these. Now we'll select spruce tree warp. Then we'll come out to the timeline. Now if I go to my transform tool, click and drag that and you can see everything's going with it now. So I wanted to create a really simple animation. I wanna delete these keyframes. I'm gonna go back to one You can also click in here and just type it in. So I'm gonna move that back a little bit and I'll grab that Bezier curve and bring that over. Now if I come out to 24, I'm gonna grab it and bring it back over. Just the Bezier curve. This is gonna be way too much movement, but you can see how that works. And we'll grab these keyframes here by left clicking and dragging and hit control C and we'll come out to 48, hit control V to paste those keyframes. And you see we got a loop. If I left click and drag on those, I can highlight them and then right click and choose cycle and it's gonna go back to frame two. Click off of that. Now if I hit this, go back to the first and hit play. You see now we have a cycle animation. Now, so obviously you could do a lot more with this, but I just wanna give you a general idea of what you can accomplish with the curver tool and then how to do a cycle and also the other parts you need to check in order to get the curve tool to work with additional layers. So hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.